I'm a person with some ideas, and my name is Mare. There's a lot of stuff going on right now, stuff we are all trying to figure out. We find ourselves at home a lot. We no longer have the chance to come and go as we please, except for those rare moments when we can steal some sunshine. But we do it because we know it's important. We also know it won't be forever. In the meantime, myself and others would like to lighten your day while we ride out this journey through the dark with comedy and experimental movies, music, art, interviews, news, cooking, fashion, ask a tomato, and more. I hope it'll be a nice distraction for you. So from the Free Pro Art Studios in Metro Detroit, let's kick off this first show with a music video that celebrates the female in color, design, surrounded by the music of I Have Everything from the movie Techno Diva. Here is She's a Revolution. I see you for who you really are. I see you for who you really are. I see you for who you really are. I see you for who you really are.
have a special treat for you. I recently spoke with Danielle Janko, the choreographer of She's a Revolution, and here are a few things she said about the making of the video. Thanks, Danielle. I just felt like there was so much meaning behind this piece and I was so honored to be able to be a part of it and then to see that final product be so cohesive and what we all had worked towards was so satisfying. I felt like we worked very well together even though we were so far apart miles distance wise. What's amazing is going back and seeing you know our emails our communication was so on point and we were so crystal clear about what it was that we wanted and we both had the same goal and I think that's why we had so, so much success we both knew exactly and we were so focused on what it was that we both wanted out of this you know I had resources in Los Angeles that you didn't have in Detroit at the time you already had so much to work off of you know from that first initial meeting you had sent me video uh, pictures of the costumes and pictures of even visual ideas that you had had. You already had the song. So all the pieces, we both have pieces, we just had to physically come together. It wasn't just a performance. It was attached to an opening of this screening. And so not only did we have to think of, okay, our presentation, but then we also had to coordinate I mean, working with the ballroom studio to ensure that we were able to acquire that space. It was a lot of strenuous hours that even just myself and Christina had worked to make sure that by the time you were in town, we were already ready to go. I made sure that her and I were already solid on our routine. And actually what's amazing is that Christina went on after not so long after um, this performance to then tour with a music artist. So I am a former master trainer for a dance fitness brand called The Blast Fitness, which is a partner-free ballroom dance class that incorporates all the dances from Dancing with the Stars. And I'm actually providing virtual classes for people. I have eight classes a week, Monday through Thursday, right in the comfort of your own home, both in morning and evening. We incorporate weights, we incorporate plyometrics, and you're actually learning the true skill of dance. So if you went to a ballroom studio, you're actually learning the specific patterns that you would learn if you're paying for a, you know, hour private lesson. And right now I'm running a deal for a buy two, get two. It's only $2.50 a class. So you get four classes for $10. I really value giving back to others. And I know times are really tough right now, but I promise you it is worth it. And it's great high calorie burn. Let's make sure that we're feeling our best selves post quarantine and that we don't get sucked into the mundane of current quarantine life. <laughs> Hope we dance with you all soon. Bye. Bye bye. In a world where it's difficult to find answers, we ask a tomato. Howdy. I'm a tomato. What kind of questions you got? Thank you, Jerry, from Bay City, Michigan. That's a very intriguing question. And if I could compare the difference that I see in this world as it relates to our current lockdown, there are less violent deaths. There are less drinking and driving. There's less global pollution. And that has a lot to do with the fact we're not leaving our homes. So if we didn't have internet, I would think the excessive nature that the internet provides us with access to what everybody's doing all the time and with all kinds of news going on all the time, if we didn't have that, I think we'd be happier, more peaceful, and not worried about what we're missing out on. I hope that answers your question. I mean, that's all I can think. Nate from Chicago, Illinois. How considerate of you to think of what I might be doing for myself. Well, I'm back to basics. I'm enjoying things like hearing the birds, um, air and wind, and I guess one of my favorite things, just silence.
sometimes I turn the radio on. I like to do a little dance, but uh, I think silence is my uh, thing right now. I hope that answers your question. Well, Star Horse from Sunland, California, I have to say that your question was very intriguing and that uh, I am a little afraid of cats, but um, I'll do my best. I kind of cheated as well because I, I did go online to find out how to answer your question precisely. But before I do that, I would just like to thank you for asking me a question that made me think, that made me do a little research and uh, find out more about these creatures that I'm so terrified by. Um, you know, they're, uh, they're not so bad. I mean, some of them still scare me, but overall, they're pretty fuzzy. And um, yeah, and from what I see, the most uh, uh, different variety of cats that there are, are 77. But some people would argue that there are less. I uh, hope that answers your question. Thank you for asking me. And for everybody else out there, I love answering your questions. That is why I am here. I'm Mike, and I'm gonna be cooking for you today. Today I'm gonna make one of my favorites, triple grilled cheese. One of my favorite tools in cooking is the cast iron skillet. You'll also wanna make sure that you have a good spatula as well as a, as a trusty knife. Be sure to wash your hands before doing anything. And today's ingredients, we have three different types of cheeses, Swiss, pepper jack, and Colby, it's a sharp Colby. When choosing your cheeses, what you wanna do is make sure that you have a distinct flavor contrast between the cheeses, but yet something that'll also meld together. When it comes to your bread, what you'll wanna do is pick a bread that's got a lot of flavor, like a sourdough or a rye or a pumpernickel. I've got a rye bread today. One of the things that I do with my grilled cheese, and a lot of people don't know, is I, instead of butter, will use mayonnaise. I do not use Miracle Whip. There's too many different flavorings and whatnot in there. I tend to use a Hellman's mayonnaise with uh, olive oil added. So, or you could use a light mayo or what, but I found that, that Hellman's has great uh, flavor with it. Okay, so let's prepare. You take the uh, mayo, essentially put, be liberal when, when uh, putting the mayo on the bread because it is your lube. So you wanna have this go on, you know, be, be liberal. Use as much as you'd like. Don't get, uh, you know, you don't have to skimp with it, so to speak. You want to take your cheese and you want to alternate it. You want to go with the uh, some of the milder cheeses here, like like so. And then I like taking my my most flavorful cheese, this case being the pepper jack, and I'll put that right in the middle. And then I will alternate it so that way with every single bite you get an alternating cheese. We've got our grilled cheese ready to roll. A cast iron skillet like I am I usually give it about you know four minutes to heat up oh yeah you can hear this bad boy kicking pretty well and so now I think it's perfect time to flip and look at that mayonnaise gives it a nice almost like a weird caramelization I love I love uh, grilled cheese I love soup you know it brings me back to being like a little kid eight years old again and it's it's fun Mmm. Outstanding.
Well, um, this is uh, day 31. I feel kind of good. I don't see any kind of effects from, like, you know, psychological aspects of this quarantine. I think everything is fine. Anybody got some bird seed? Oh my gosh, so cool. Jagged stars. Wobbly solar systems, roundish planets, radioactive Milky Ways. I've never been that far away from home before. Uh, everybody spoke different languages, but as soon as I tried to speak their language, they would quickly just switch to my language because they were tired of hearing me very quickly speak their language wrong. I had tons and tons of food I never had before. Things that come in shells. No idea that, oh, that's brilliant. That sounds really good. I'll have that. Everybody there was really nice with all the hand motions and head movements. There was one of them that was one of the youngest that I met. She had a face that was hard to say no to. Places that made me happy. I'm gonna spit this out. <laughs> I would ride my bicycle way up the hills and they test the acoustics every half hour and it goes like this. But imagine all those notes keep going so I'm harmonizing with myself. And I got kind of where the highest part was and it was just as the sun was setting and I looked towards the sunset and their seeds were flowing to the air and the sunset was on the other side so it would light up little little tiny little lit up it was like snowflakes with little tiny light bulbs like little christmas tree light bulbs inside each one but they weren't connected with wires because they were in the sky and they were falling slowly oh so pretty It's happening all around us, everywhere we go, every time we see something it's news, everything we breathe and hear and see and do and what we want to know about it's news, news, everybody, here it comes! Here we go. Hello and good morning, afternoon, evening, you pick. I'm Mayor Costello and this is news today all over the world people are waking up this phenomena has been occurring ever since the beginning of time when folks from all walks of life would be so tired they would lay their head down close their eyes not move and fall asleep which led to the common state of reawakening we now know as waking up breaking news Spring is in the air in Michigan, and thousands of Michiganders are bursting into the, their backyards, enjoying sun and light for the first time in weeks. Move over, pizza rat. 
In Philadelphia, a groundhog was seen eating a large slice of pizza for several minutes in full view of two dogs who were trapped behind a window, helplessly drooling. Watch me eat this pizza, homie, was what an onlooker imagined the groundhog was thinking. Breaking news. It is now 29 degrees in Michigan and snowing. Time to dust off that shovel, grab a pillow, and start screaming in it. Now is a time I'd like to take a step back and review an article I wrote in grade school. This is a newspaper that I created called the Pay Press. Kind of a play on words instead of the free press. Okay, let's pick one. Here we go. A fall into death. Cinderella died yesterday when she fell down the steps of the prince's castle at midnight. It was a terrifying sight, says Cinderella's stepsister. I think Cinderella was pushed from my castle, says the prince. Police, police officials say that it was Cinderella's stepmother who is now, who is now spelling error in Alcatraz, serving a life sentence. I never liked the stepmother at all. She smelt of kibasa, said the godmother. Yesterday, one of the stepsisters said that Cinderella and her step, okay, it continues. So apparently I had a morbid sense of humor when I was a little girl. Breaking news. It is now 70 degrees in Michigan and everyone is absolutely confused. That's it for me, Mayor Costello. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening, morning, afternoon. You pick.